everyone, I'm Replay Ty Heretic, and welcome back to Paper Mario. In the last episode, we finished off Mount Rugged, and we finished Dry Dry Desert's important stuff. In this episode, we're going to do a few things here in the Dry Dry Outpost. We're actually going to go to the item shop first. Oh, um... Okay, follow that. Follow that mouse. Ah, this guy. Welcome, say hello to Chuck Quizmo, one of the weirdest characters of the game. He asks you questions. He has 64 questions in the game. And he appears in random places in the game. For every question you get right, 60, you get a star piece. Now first off, look in the audience. You have Luigi in the audience, which is weird. This is like the first time you actually have it. Uh, this is, so her name is Goombaria. Okay, so star piece, you obtain a star piece for each question you get right. And that's it, pretty much. You just have to ask, you just have to answer questions. Now, you have the Toad House right here. You don't really need it, but back here is something you're going to want. Say hello to, uh, Merle? Yeah. She does, she rhymes. And for some reason, I keep on hearing her voice. I hear, like, Zakora's voice from... Like My Little Pony. Like that kind of accent, that kind of voice. Just constantly rhyming. It's actually Yeah, that does Yeah, that that explains that explains Merlee pretty well. <laughs> Z Zakora. Perfect. Okay. So You can have the special course or you can have the petite course. We have enough coins for the special course, so we're gonna pay for the special course. Now, what Merle does is that at any time during a battle, she will help you. Increase your she'll increase your attack, increase your defense, double how many star coins you get, star points you get, how much health you reobtain, how much flower points you obtain, how many coins you get when the battle ends. All this stuff will be really helpful. And the special course lasts a few hours of game of playtime. Not a few hours in real time. A few hours of playtime. Now, as you see here, they actually can count how much playtime you have. We're at three and a half. Merle, Merle's special course lasts about six to eight hours of playtime. And I'm pretty sure we will be mostly done with Paper Mario by that time. But Merle is extremely helpful. And if you've watched Luca Jin's LP of Paper Mario herself, as you've seen, having the star point boost is really helpful, including at the end of the fight, where you can get like 80, 90 star points. Really helpful. So I'm gonna check I'm gonna check in some items. I'm gonna check in the Ultra Shroom. And I'm going to Oh wait, I don't want the lemon. Uh Okay, I'm also going to stash Wacka's bump. Okay, and then I'm going to talk to him again to claim that lemon. I want that lemon. Here we go. Okay, no. Okay, so the first thing that we need is we need a dried shroom and then a dusty hammer. That, that's the password. Now, naturally, if you want to talk to Mr. Mustafa, the cloaked guy that that purple mouse was talking to, you give that lemon to, and then, then that cloak will tell you the password, which is the dried shroom and then the dusty hammer. When you talk, when you talk to the shopkeeper after using a dried shroom and then a dusty hammer, you go up here. Pretty much, a dried shroom and a dusty hammer are two really terrible items. I mean, look, it's a dried shroom, only one HP, 
And Mario's animation when he eats it is hilarious. Well, not that animation. When he eats it in battle, he, like, sticks his tongue out. It's hilarious. Okay. So I just bypassed, like, five minutes of doing this. Believe it or not, Mr. Mustafa actually tell actually will tell you two. Di he actually has two different types of dialogue. One, if he if you ask him what the password is, he will naturally uh, he will naturally just go with his normal dialogue. However, if you don't if you don't talk to him about the password, he will actually he will actually give you this dialogue that you just saw. So, this is one of the few times where, if you know the password, then you get unique uh, dialogue from the characters. It's re it's a nice touch. Uh, about Paper Mario, uh, I actually did want to LP the Thousand Year Door, and I want to find out how many people want me to play that as well. I mean, because I don't own the game, and I'm contemplating on either getting Sticker Star or the Thousand Year Door. And I want to get people's uh, opinions, because I, I will LP the Thousand Year Door if people want me to. Because I do love the game, and I would love to LP it. I just want people to actually, you know, enjoy it with me. Uh, I don't really know the Thousand Year Door that well, so I'd need to play it a few times over. And I've actually never beaten the game. I've gotten to the end of it, but I've never beaten it. Now, about those lemons and such, they're actually kind of useful. There is a there is one thing that we do need to get though. Uh, in the store there is a uh, dried pasta, and you can't really eat dried pasta very well. I mean, it's dried pasta. However, uh, you take this to Tasty, and she'll make you spaghetti. Really helpful. So we're gonna get a couple of them, and then we're gonna check them in, so we can pick them up at the shop at uh, Toad Town. Now, the Dusty Hammer is not really that useful of an item, but you can attack, uh, you can attack pr practically any enemy with it. Uh, I'm actually gonna sell that thing, though. So, in case you didn't know, yes, you can sell items. You do sell items for half their price, though. So, well, about, I think actually like 40% of the price. Okay, so going back into Dry Dry Desert, we don't really have much. Uh... Oh wait, there's actually one more thing we need to do. Uh, follow this path. Follow this path. Just keep following this path. There is a... Uh, there is a... Mouse somewhere. Near one of these trees. Right here. You get a uh, you get a letter for a nomada mouse, which is what these guys are called, and he gives you a star piece, I do believe. You get a star piece for your efforts, thankfully. Now, the w most annoying thing about this thing is, see that pulse stone we have up above our head? The closer we get to dry dry ruins the louder and more obnoxious it gets. So we're just going to keep going up. And the closer we get, the lap, the faster it's going to get. Going to grab a honey syrup. Now there are random uh, level there are random things scattered throughout this uh, level. Scra scattered throughout this area. Many useful items. left. We're not there yet. You see what I mean? I'm just going to let this sit here for you. Let it sink in. There. Okay. 
So put it in the pulse stone, and then it will instantly turn to night. And then a desert, and then a ruin will rise, rise from the sands. And then Colorado will naturally freak out, and the other one, and the other guys will be chattering with glee. A really nice addition to this entire thing is seeing all the characters. Like, Mustafa's just like, good luck, traveler, and the other ones are just flipping their shit. <laughs> it's great. Coffee. I'm still on the same cup of coffee from uh, the last episode. It's cold, but I'm drinking it. Okay. So in here we have ghostly entities. So there's a couple of things we have to do here. Now, first off, we only have 16 star points. But we do have that one badge that we do need to add. The damage dodge badge. Now, the badges that we got are very unique. The runaway pay badge and the spin attack badge are particularly interesting. Runaway pay is really helpful if you're just trying to get some star points from enemies. However, the one we want to add is damage dodge. This is really helpful. So, first off, you see these coffins. In these are mummy pokies. I forget their actual name. I think they're called mummy pokies, actually. Now, naturally, these guys are going to show us our first status effect of the game in the story. Yeah, pokey mummies. Now, remember that they. Now, remember that you can't touch anything that's spiky, otherwise, you'd take damage. The same thing goes for your uh, partners. Now, see what I mean about. Uh, Bombette's FP yield, really high, but really effective. I mean, like, look at the damage. Boom, six. Instant. Really helpful to get a bunch of star points. Now, in the second coffin is the Spike Shield Badge. One of the most useful badges you can get in the game. What the Spike Shield Badge does is that it gives you is that it gives you invulnerability to spiked enemies. So, like, the spiked Goomba, or the Cleft, or the Pokies cannot damage you by you jumping on them. Only Mario, though. Your teammate will still take damage, sadly. Having the Spike Shield badge is important to have, since it's actually a really, ba in a really good badge to have. So we're actually going to take off Chill Out and put on the Spike Shield. Just to show you what it's like. So, you have these two pokies here. You can take them out with your hammer and do some nice damage. However, the power jump has a little bit more damage and so does the power bounce. Now that we have spike shield, we can attack them without taking damage. Making our jobs much easier. So for these so for pokies, you'll want to attack them with uh, with your partner, Cooper, since he doesn't take damage because of his shell. Thanks to Mario's uh, spike shield, he can now jump on them normally. This is important to have. Now, Pokemummies have an important status effect about them. They have a chance to poison Mario for one damage every turn. You can get, po you can get a status effect for up to three turns. And the status effects are usually really bad. There is a enemy in the Toad Town sewers, really annoying to fight. Okay, here we are. Poison. So every turn, Mario will take one tick of damage. And he will keep taking damage until the fight ends, or until his status effect wears off. Having poison is actually a bad thing in some senses, but it's actually not that bad at times. The one badge that you'll want if you hate having status effects like this is the Feeling Fine badge, which you can get for, um... Mm, I can't... It's not more lovely. I think. It's not more lovely. Okay, so right here we have a key. The Ruins key is used to get 
the lock up there, because for some reason in the ruins they have giant steel padlocks that you'd see in a fortress, per se. Oh well. Now, as you see here, we have a bunch of sand. We we're going to press down this block, and the sand will sink down into that bottom floor, giving us access to the room in there. Now, there's a couple of peculiarities about the sand. There are two rooms that have star pieces in them that will fill with sand. You want to make sure that you get one of these rooms before you take uh, the sand into that room, because if so, you won't get the star piece. It's in one of these rooms, I'm sure of it. Okay, so we're going to switch to Paracarry, because we have a gap that we need to go through. Buzzy beetles are pretty much like are pretty much like Koopas. You have to flip them over to damage them, such and such. And they're actually fairly fun to fight, because some of, sometimes they can be on the ceiling. And remember that Quake Hammer badge? Yeah, that's a useful one. Okay, so we're going to fill the sand in this room now. And then we're going to get the star piece from in here. This is one of the few dungeons where they actually have star pieces in the dungeon. There's not that many. Okay, so we go in here to grab the Ruins Key, and I'm hoping that we can cover most of this dungeon in this video. I played this game, like, a crap ton as a kid, and I didn't really play through it as, as, uh, I didn't play through it as much as I am now. Like, I actually didn't, uh, play through it as much. Okay, so we're gonna go into the, so we're gonna grab the Ruins Key and use it down here, which will gain us access to a few things. Now up here we have an item that we need that we can obtain later up there. That's an artifact. We're gonna need that to get another star piece from Colorado. Okay, so we're gonna pull out Cooper and we are going to hit the block to trigger a trap that will get us all these Poke Mummies that we need to get the key. God knows why you need to get a key. That's actually one thing that I never understood in games like this. I mean, I mean, yeah, it would be interesting to see a game where the moment the hero triggers a trap, they like like this, and they defeat all the enemies and such. They don't get a key to get out or anything. Like they actually are just trapped. I mean, that should be something that uh, that should be a game actually. You being the villain, and very, and you have to like fend off various heroes by like doing all these basic things, coming up with really complex ways to stop their adventure before they get to you. you know, stuff like that. That'd be an interesting concept. I actually gotta write that down. That'd be very interesting, actually. That'd be, f that'd be one hell of a game to play. Ah, here we go. Now, you see that? Now, you see a swoopula up there. Yeah, they're called swoopulas. I do believe. Now, Cooper can't actually attack them. He can't. Like, he, he really can't do anything. Well, besides attacking the Pokey. I think, yeah, they're called Swoopulas in this game, but they're called Swoopers in other games. Only Paracarry can attack Swoopers. Oh no, these are called Swoopers. Oh no, I'm thinking of later enemies. Whoops. Anyways, this is a swooper, and he naturally flies, so you can't hit him with a hammer unless you have the hammer throw badge on. So, we get rid of this, these enemies, get rid of one more enemy. Now, I like variety in games like this. Variety in enemies and such. Now, the one thing you can do in this is that instead of using your up and down on your joystick, you can actually press Z and R. Because for some silly reason, they added that in. Probably because, like, if you have, like, a broken joystick or something. Oh, wait. Okay, I spaced out and did something wrong again. Now, see, most of these enemies cause one tick of, like, two ticks of damage. And with damage dodge, they don't do any damage at all. It's very important later down the road that you have a badge that denies most of this damage because as you see you're going to get taken out really quickly if you don't if you don't get if you don't get them out of the way 
if you don't get those damage ticks out of the way. So having something called damage dodge really helps with that. I think there are two in the game. Mm, actually, no. There's there's one damage dodge, but there's one that's much more powerful later. I don't know what it's called, but it costs six star points. Star badge points. God, son of a bitch! I can't remember the name of anything to save my life. Star points, star badges, star pieces. What the hell? So many star things. Star spirits, star badges, stars, 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 stars. Pac-Man. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Breaking out of character. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so in here we have a valuable treasure. So in order to do this, we actually need to solve a puzzle, which is pretty much flipping all these staircases so we can go to various ones. This puzzle is actually fairly straightforward, but there's a badge in this room that we can get. Not very useful, but it's actually a decent badge to have, you know, for anything you want to try doing. Okay, so we go in, so we go up here to press this. Uh, down here. And naturally, that's about all you can do here. I mean, as you see, we've already solved the puzzle. It's an interesting puzzle. I mean, it's fun. It's actually really interesting. You just flip over these so you have a staircase up here. Now, when you go here, stay to the wall. And as you see, walk very slowly so you don't fall off. And right here is a hidden chest with a badge called Slogo. Now, with Slogo, uh, it doesn't cost any badge points, as far as I know. Yeah. With it, you can only walk. It's pretty useful in a degree. You can jump and everything, but you can only run. But you can only walk, I mean. It's a badge that's kind of interesting to use. It's a non-useful badge, but it's easy. So, here's the Super Hammer. The attack power of Mario's hammer increases from 2 to 3, so you can damage the clefts and such. Now you can destroy stone blocks, like this. Relative ease. Okay. Now that we have our stone hammer, we can actually collect the key item of this level. Oh, ah, ah, ah. Okay, that first strike thing is actually probably going to hurt me. Eek. Okay, um... Okay, this is gonna probably not end well. Okay, I gotta pray. I gotta pray to the mustached gods. Ah! Okay. That's probably gonna get annoying to some people, but it it's fun. It's fun it's fun for everyone. Okay, I'm just gonna use Bombat for these guys. As you see with damage dodge, instead of doing doing two ticks of damage like that guy did. And that guy did. Oh, and I got lucky on that one. Okay. They don't do much damage at all. Okay, so I'm going to use a honey serum. There is a badge in this game where I think uh your where I think your partner can also focus. Oh right. Right, I forgot about that. Okay, well, I'm avoiding death. <laughs> Somehow. Which is good and bad at the same time. Okay, I guess I, uh, guess I take him out. Something I should have started doing a long time ago. Okay, so we took out one of them. This is probably really hurting some people that enjoy the game. Me being a complete idiot. You paid. He why you clicked on the video. Enjoy some. Enjoy some minor stupidity at my expense. I mean, come on, it's the morning. You can't really expect me to be smart in the morning. I don't even. I think my commentary sounds the same as if I'm tired, because I'm always tired. Yeah, there's my there's my deep dark secret. Stay tired. 
Your and your commentary can be as boring as mine. Actually, this fight would be really good to have payoff. Really helpful, actually. Now, the one peculiarity about Buzzy Beetles compared to Koopas, which because I forgot about this, uh, if you try using Bomb, actually I don't know. I think Koopas can do that as well. Okay, so here's Merle. Merle will increase the star points you earn, which means that uh, your points double. Remember what I said. Merle is really useful if you're trying to just get that extra. If you're just trying to get that extra few points in. Now over here is a. Over here is a super block. Down here. This is one of the few areas in the game where there's more than one. Okay, so what I need to do. Um, right. Uh, I'm gonna increase Paracarry's power because having him with a more powerful uh, shock ability, a more powerful shell shock ability, I think that's what it's called, shell shot, damn it, will be really helpful. Oh, don't want that. Okay. So we upgrade, so we have Bombette over here, and we're gonna use her to blow open this wall, and we're gonna start getting the artifacts of this level. Now, having Bombette during these fights is really helpful. She can pack a hell of a punch. Now, Stone Chomps. These guys are fairly powerful to fight. They have two defense points, so they can't be attacked by normal attacks. However, if you use if you use the power of a if you use the power of your hammer, their defense points go away. So you can pack a hell of a punch. I might have just killed myself. I don't know if this will do anything. Okay, it does. Whew. Me being a dumbass at everyone's expense. Hallelujah. Now, as you see, they pay off a lot of coins. And I'm actually going to use my Super Shroom here, because I am afraid. Okay, here we go. We got the Diamond Stone. There's two other stones we have to get, and this is going to be an extended episode, you know, like the last episode. Pretty much this level, in general, is actually really long. Okay, so here we have the peculiarity of Bozzy Beetles. Not only can they do this in the overworld, but in fights, they can do this. So having Paracarry out helps, because he can take down the Bozzy Beetles from the ceiling. One other peculiarity about Buzzy Beetles is that, on the first turn, they flip over, instead of, like, Koopas, where they take two turns. So, if you want to keep fighting, if you want to make sure that they don't attack you, you gotta make sure to take them out in that state. Also, in a fight, if you get first strike, if you get hit by first strike, they can deal a hell of a punch because when they fall from the ceiling, they deal 3 damage instead of their 2 damage. Okay, so one thing I want to do here is I want to put make sure that Chill Out is on, because Chill Out is going to be really helpful to use. So I don't really use Power Bounce that much, even though I will when, the level, when I get a level up, so I'm going to put that back on. I'm going to put on Chill Out so I don't get first strike. Okay, here we go. As you see, you can't actually attack them like that. Uh, what's... what to do here? Um, okay, I'm gonna use Paracarry to get that Buzzy Beetle off the ceiling. And then I'm going to take him out with a jump. Buzzy Beetles have 3 HP. Should have figured that out earlier. I forgot to say that. Okay, so I'm going to have Paracarry take out the Swooper, and I'm going to take out the Buzzy Beetle. Yep. Uh, yeah, Swoopulas, I do believe, poison you. As well. I am talking about future enemies, and I'm going to do that a lot, so I'm sorry. Okay, there we go. And we have our next level up. 
That was pretty fast. Thank you, Marley. Okay, so I'm gonna level up my badge points again. I want to make sure that I have plenty of badge points. I mean, I can manage with the health that I have. I can, I can manage. I've, I've been really close, and if I do need a buff, then I can turn off a badge, and I can put that on. So I want to turn on... I'm going to turn on Quake Hammer, and I'm going to turn on Power Bounce. I'm not sure if I should turn on Runaway Pay, though. No, I don't need that. Uh, here we go. Okay, so naturally we have these enemies here, right? I'm gonna have... I want to see if this works. I want to see if this flips them over. Nope, it just does damage. Okay, so, as you see here, we have a Quake Hammer. With Quake Hammer, it damages all enemies on the ground and ceiling, like so. It's a really useful move to have, including against enemies that are that you can't hit, like on a ceiling, that only Paracarry can have. And I, for one, prefer having Paracarry. And, and I, for one, have prefer having... Can't talk. Uh, and I, for one, prefer having Bombat out. So you can see the problem here. This is probably going to be a 40-minute uh, thing, because I don't... Because I know I can get this done really fast. Because here's our, because here's our key, and we already have all we need to get the last two keys here. As you see here, we have, uh, as you see here, the three symbols that we have are actually the, um, they're actually the, uh, uh God, the stones, and the pink one is the hammer. So if we go in here, we have these five blocks. And up here, we have a Ruins Key. However, we shouldn't go in here yet, because there is a star piece not here. Crap, I'm not thinking properly today. It's just like, oh yeah, there's stuff here and here. Okay, so first off, when we pull the plug, we're going to fill that room that we were just in. Like so. And that was actually rather fast, considering. And here we have our keys. Remember, triangle, star, moon. Triangle, star, moon. There you go. And the cool thing is, is that in that hallway that we were at, there's actually sand filling the door. Okay, so our next... Our next thing is here, the Lunar Stone. So remember that. Pyramid, Star, Moon. Okay, so we gotta have Bombat out. Because Bombat will do deal some serious damage. Some massive damage. Okay. There we go. There we go. See? Done. Fast. Instant. Gun. Day game over. See? That's what I mean. Bombette's ability is extremely powerful. Okay, and then our final stone is to the left. No, it's above us. We need to go up. So we need to get the... And the thing is, is that I think that's a pattern. I finish the dungeon, and then I save the fight for the next episode. I, I think that's my peculiarity. Okay, so... Right here we have... This block, and we need this artifact to get another star piece. So we're gonna grab it. Okay, and we go in here and get our final... object. Okay, so let's just take out this guy. Boom. Done. Remember, bomb will only do bomb. Doing a bomb in the open world will do a bomb in this world. Okay, so here's Marley's other enchantment. She will increase our attack power, which means that we could possibly take out this enemy in one hit if we wanted to. And we will. 
we go. Eight star points. Easy as can be. I've heard rare stories where Merle does two lucky enchants. Like, does two enchantments. But I've never seen that happen. I think, I think it's limited to only one battle. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know. Okay, so we have our... So we have our three stones. Now we need to put them in. We have Pyramid, Star, Moon. I have no idea why Mario does that. Okay. Here we are. And here's where the music gets oddly mystifying. So, there's nothing here. Nothing left here. So, in the next episode, we will take on the final boss of Dry Dry Ruins. <sighs> Crap. That didn't sound right. Now let me try that again. Because I think I deserve a second chance at that. In the next episode, we will take on the boss of Dry Dry Ruins, King Tutan Koopa. Is it Tutan Koopa? Tutan Koopa? <laughs> Screw it. Until then, I'm Replay Tie Heretic, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.